What is up guys? Uh, you guys asked me to make a video on bacteria and parasites explaining why it's not a danger when you're eating raw food like raw meat, raw milk and so on. Uh, so let's get into it a little bit. I'm not going to go super in depth. I'm just going to explain. Damn, let's zoom in a bit more. Um, I'm just going to explain some of the uh, myths um, and so on and like just get a little bit into it but not too in depth. Um, and a little bit more in parasites because the research on parasites is quite nuanced and especially the misconceptions of it, um, the fear mongering around it is crazy. So I'm going to get into that a bit. So here we have Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch. These are the founders of the germ theory and um, it emerged mid to late 19th century. Louis Pasteur is the guy who um, pasteurization is named after and pasteurization came about because of the food poisoning caused by milk raw milk um from the cities and that happened when um i believe in america uh farmers transitioned from well the supply of milk transitioned from being from you know natural farms grass outside of the city until um to farms inside the city the cows are getting fed absolute slop waste products, terrible uh, food, super unhealthy cows, right? And they produce toxic milk. And then <laughs> people got sick, formaldehyde was added to it, they got more sick, and then pasteurization was invented. Um, and this was due to the food poisoning, obviously, but uh, the thought, the theory around why it was people getting sick from it was the germs, but that was never actually proven. Um, so the germ theory is based on associations and um and also just infections of from bacteria found in the stool and so on associated to food poisoning right when i say infection i just mean the presence of the microorganism and it's never actually been isolated to cause disease or anything so i'm going to get into that a bit more so cock Robert Koch created the Cox postulates. His postulates are a series of four steps to prove that microorganisms cause disease. So the first one that we're looking at here is the microorganism must be found in all cases of disease, but not in healthy animals, right? So we should have zero cases of the organism present in animals not affected or without symptoms of this proposed disease that we're trying to link it to. So here's a screenshot of a study um, done on salmonella infected people and 73% of the people infected, this is Swedish travelers, 73% uh, of the Swedish travelers had an asymptomatic infection. So that's actually the majority having an asymptomatic infection, which is crazy. So salmonella done by his standards, uh, salmonella is not pathogenic whatsoever. All right. Moving on to parasites, so the same thing happens with parasites, right? So 90% of children in certain populations host Guardia. Um, 73 to 100% of people have blastocystis. Uh, 20 to 69% of, of um, Leishmania infections are estimated to be asymptomatic. Toxoplasma gondii, which is supposed to be supposedly the cause of toxoplasmosis, affects around 30% of the global population. Not affects, I mean is present in the around 30% of the global population. So also I screenshotted this study because I couldn't find the whole one. So I just screenshotted the um, kind of preview, but it says that many, perhaps most tapeworm carries asymptomatic. So that's quite interesting because tapeworms are so feared um, when it comes to things like eating pork and whatever. So, so here are some screenshots of a controlled experiment done on animals. In this case, the uh, guinea pigs and rabbits were inoculated intracerebrally. So they're actually injected with this parasite into their brain, which is super unnatural and would never occur in nature, obviously. Uh, so it's kind of irrelevant that they had a fatal um, outcome from this because they were literally injected with something into their brain directly, um, which would never occur in nature whatsoever. So, and the contact experiments uh, were all negative when it comes to mice. So there was no fatality, no symptoms, um, when it came to the contact with the parasite. So getting infected naturally, um, 
but there were we can see down here there were um fatalities when the animals were allowed to feed on the unhealthy the dead um animals right which is normal right you shouldn't eat any unhealthy animal of course but animals all have parasites even when they're healthy which means the parasite is not the cause of the disease right so helminths which are worms they actually um are immunoregulatory so they regulate immunity in the body um we can see here this is a screenshot of a study which i'll link down below as well the expansion and increased functionality of these regulatory cells during helminth infection may be responsible for the bystander suppression of autoimmune diseases uh, so they actually suppress autoimmunity. So this can uh, help with autoimmune diseases like Crohn's, which is very talked about today in terms of the health community because it's such a prevalent health condition that, um, and it turns out that parasites are actually helping with this. So I'm going to go to a study now. Regions in the world where helminth parasites are way more common, they have way less uh, prevalence of allergies and autoimmune diseases which is quite interesting and when people have had a anti-parasitic medication they have um had an increase in allergies so in mouse experiments um helminths have been shown in many studies to suppress the symptoms of many different types of experimental autoimmune diseases such as um type 1 diabetes arthritis and colitis as well as uh, allergies yeah, this, these have been uh, investigated for things like autism, multiple sclerosis, asthma, uh, allergies, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis. And we can go to another study here. So this study is on monkeys. They infected them with these worms, and four out of five of the monkeys improved their symptoms, and uh, they had changes in their gut immune response. And the, the um, worms actually modulate the uh, gut microbiome. So the, the bacteria in that is the colonies are actually um, regulated by these parasites. And the microbiome is so important for immunity, for proper development of children, expression of stem cells and so on. So yeah, that's a bit about um, bacteria and parasites. There's a bit more about this in my community. Um, one of the guides in my community I have about this and I'll also be updating it with some new research I put together um, so if you want to check that out you can my link to my private community is down in the description uh, but other than that uh, just hit the subscribe button if you enjoy this like and um, comment what you want me to talk about next what topics or anything what you want me to cover next so yeah thanks for watching guys